Okay, so let's do use one more example of how to reduce dimensions. And we're going to find this actually not in the feature selection because uh, the technique I'm going to show you is not for uh, choosing which of our existing features or independent variables we want to use, but rather for transforming all of your independent variables into a set of smaller, more meaningful, but less interpretable independent variables. Let me show you what I mean. So go here to data transformation. Oh, and by the way, let's go ahead and get rid of this permutation feature importance and delete this line right here because we're going to stick this in between uh, select columns and split data and grab. Uh, it's not here under manipulation. It's not here. It's there we go. Scale and reduce. It is principal components analysis. So this is an old technique. It's been used for a long time. Um, if you're familiar with what a factor analysis is, um, PCA is a technique used for that. Uh, but anyway, connect the dots, connect the dots, and click here on principal components. Okay, so first of all, launch column selector. Um, which dimensions do we want to reduce? Now you'll find, uh, oh, sorry, before I do that, let's bring, I remember in the last video, I eliminated a bunch of variables because that uh, previous tool we used told us to get rid of them, but let's bring them all back in. Uh, that's it. So we're never going to do this with, I'm just going to, I'm only doing this to put the dependent variable on the bottom anyway. What we're about to do is only for independent variables. So we're not going to um, include the dependent variable in this, but launch column selector and says, which columns do you want to include? So I think it'll be easier to come here first and let's run this one fast so that when I use this tool, oops, come on, run. Oh, it won't let me until I fix this one. All right, fine. Okay, so uh, let's go back to this one. And I'll include there. Oh, but it's showing me everything because it wouldn't let me run the selector yet. That's fine. Okay, I'm gonna put all of these in. Children, cars, age, education, occupation, homeowner, commute distance, region. Okay, number of dimensions. Um, so, we're taking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven variables. How many variables do we want to reduce those seven down to? Is that really what I have? I thought I had more than that. One, two, three. Can I move this over a bit? Oh, there we go. No, there's all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, let's see if we can reduce that to something like four. Okay. Let's go ahead and run this, show you what happens. All right, fine, I'll pause it while I wait. It's probably gonna finish the second I pause. All right, looks like I forgot to uh, add gender in when I was doing my select columns, no big deal. There it is, yep. Check, try that one more time. Okay. okay, let's see what we get here. Right click on principal components analysis. Uh, there's two things we want to look at. First, let's start with the PCA transformation. Um, actually, no results in data set. Okay, so here's how we interpret this. We've got uh, all these cases here of a thousand rows, and here's our four new variables that have been created based on the dimensions of each of the other variables, uh, and their scores across those four variables. So this first one right here is really big, probably because it includes income in it, which is making it really, really big. So I would actually probably prefer to standardize these before I, before I do a, um, a principal components analysis. So a better thing to do here, let's, if I can squeeze it in, there we go. I would grab a normalized data, Delete that one, feed this one into here. Wish I could like select, can I do that? Yes. All right, let's Z-score these things, all numeric. Uh, that'll work. 
Um, rerun the PCA. Let's go ahead and run that now. Let's pause this. Okay, let's see this again. Results, data set, visualize. All right, there we go. So now, uh, well, I've also standardized. That's fine. Purchased by numeric. But now these are a bit more comparable. Here's their scores across those. Let's see now uh, what's happened with our trained model. So now we just have these four variables and the, uh, whatever you call it, um, intercept. And what it's done, uh, the, I, I don't, won't be able to go into detail on how principal components analysis works, but it's basically drawn uh, a, a line through these dimensions to try to make these dimensions as orthogonal or independent from each other as possible. Similar to when we've talked about cluster analysis, the way this works, the idea is to, to separate group cases together as closely as possible along dimensions that are as far apart as possible. And we determine that number of dimensions. So what I do is I'd come down here and let's evaluate this thing. Uh, visualize. All right, four dimensions is not the right thing. We've gone down from our R squared of 10% down to seven. That didn't help us out a whole lot. So what we do is we come back here and we try a variety of different dimensions. But let's take a look at some of these other options that we have here and see if there's anything uh, that we can find that's particularly useful. Um, eh, I don't want to save that. What I wish it would show me, and maybe there is a way to see it, is exactly how, uh, when I typically do a PCA and some other tool, it will show me how each variable uh, fell in each of those dimensions. Um, and uh, some of the advice you'll get from other people that do this is to not include those variables that you already know are very significant in a PCA. I don't know that I totally agree with that. The reason why they say that, let's let me show you what I mean here. So for example, we know that cars was already a very uh, significant indicator. So is commute distance. And so they recommend don't include those in your PCA at all. Well, uh, that's because they want those to remain interpretable, the coefficients for those variables. But the truth is, is uh, if they're, well, it, it all depends on how intercorrelated those are with some of the other variables. So let's take those two big ones out that we knew were really important already and rerun this and see what it does. Pause that. All right, let's take a look at that. Our R squared now that we have this new Definitely gone up, not as high as our 10 we were getting at before. So I'm going to take out a couple more of those. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think region was significant. The ones that weren't significant, I think it was marital status, gender. I think income was significant. Oh, gosh, now I'm just kind of guessing. I'm pre I'm pretty sure age, homeowner. Uh, let me take out this one. There was five that we took out. Uh, Let's take out this one. All right. So these are the uh, variables we had lost before um, because they weren't giving us a whole lot of R squared. What I want to do, though, is re reduce those down uh, to maybe two dimensions. I could even reduce them to one if it helped. No, two. I would never want to do one. I think we, we want at least two or more. So let's go ahead and uh, run that one. Pause. Okay, let's see what we get now. Uh, better. Um, the idea is I'd keep playing with this till I got an R squared that's better than what I was getting when I didn't include those five variables. Um, but it won't be as good as when I included every variable as it was. However, the advantage of using this to reduce it down from four to two is, or five to two, is that I'm just, I'm less likely to overfit my data.